Alright, welcome to another Alpha Labs video. Today, uh, it's been a while, um, but today I'm going to show you something with the PS Audio Power Plant 12, and that's because we still get a lot of comments on our videos and on our Facebook posts that power conditioning doesn't do anything. Well, okay, that might be your opinion. Uh, we really try to show you that it actually does. Uh, does do something, but the power plant is something different. We have tested quite a few of power conditioners lately. The Puritan, of course, the Audio uh, Audio Quest uh, 3, 5, and 7 series, the Isotec Aquarius, the Gemini, the Synchro, uh, the Titan, some Yeti filters like the Standard 4P and the Reference. And they all did something, some did more than others, but we really, really wanted to try a PS Audio product because it's been over a decade. Now we have the Power Plant 12 and uh, again I want to show you what this device can do. Now it has multiple modes uh, and I'm gonna first do a clean wave, what was it called? Yeah, clean wave uh, calibration or something. Then I want to auto-tune it so that there is no discussion about the settings. It will actually measure the input, calibrate the output and then it should be performing on its best. And then I'm going to show you what this device can do in terms of reconditioning, distortion removal and we're going to do a test on the Bryston uh, power plate amp power pack, sorry. So it is in low, low distortion mode, it calibrated and now we can choose a sine wave or a multi-wave waveform. I'm gonna choose sine wave because multi-wave actually increases the distortion so maybe that's what people said like yeah the power plants increase distortion. No, but it does in, in multi-wave and I'm going to show you that as well. So it's in sine wave mode now. This on screen is the actual output from the AC generator over there. So there is no noise input. We're going to do that later. No noise, no DC, nothing, just a clean output. And you can see it's 0.2% THD and noise. That's pretty, pretty good, but that's what you pay for. This is in the last mode, okay. Um, so yeah, let's just copy this and see what the PS Audio can do. I'm gonna put this in zone A. And you will see that it actually changes. So, this is actually higher, but the distortion is down and that's also that has all to do with the sine wave. How clean is the sine wave? This is the noise level. So yeah, noise goes up a little bit, but I'll show you later what it does on a normal AC output. But this was interesting because also the uh, harmonics are way, way down. So that, that's something that struck me when I saw this output for the first time. Like, okay, the noise is up, but the harmonics are down. Interesting. Now I'm going to increase the noise level and you have to pay attention to this, the 0.15 distortion. So I'm going to turn this down. So this is the output from the PS Audio. Yes, noise is up, but harmonics are way, way down. Now I'm going to increase the noise. So I'm going to inject some white noise. Yeah, nothing. Interesting, isn't it? Nothing, nothing happens. And you can hear that the AC generating is working its ass off right now. Now I'm going to show you what it does to the grid. Ooh, now that's actually going up a lot. So I'm gonna turn this down. This was the original. 
So you can see on the normal grid the noise went up dramatically, like 20 decibels at least. The harmonics went up, but actually on the PS Audio it's exactly the same. So this one is completely stable, nothing on the grid. And you can see that the noise now is 1.8% THD and noise. And if I switch this off, it goes down to 0.2. Uh, if I switch it on, it's 1.8. Now with the PS Audio, it's still 0 0.18, 0 0.2, 0 0.18. So that's what this does. It's always stable, regardless of how shitty your AC grid is, it will always, always, always be the same. Now, that's something. So does it do something? I think so. <laughs> it definitely does something. Uh, we experimented in, uh, with some other waveforms. I even fed it a uh, triangle wave and it actually <laughs> made it a sine wave. So you can do some really freaky shit with this uh, PS Audio power plant. And it's always the same output. And that's the thing with uh, regenerators like this, at least if they're well built, it will always be the same output, regardless of the input. Now I have to be really careful when I do this, but I'm gonna inject some DC because it doesn't really like that, I noticed. But let's see what happens. I'm gonna move the copied things away. I'm gonna copy this so you can see what actually happens. So we're looking at the uh, PS Audio Powerplant 12 output right now. This is the output of this. So this is noise floor. And this is the sine wave. DCE. Doesn't really like that. You will hear it in a second. Um, like I predicted, nothing happens. And there's actually one volt of DC going in right now. Uh, and it's completely agnostic. If I, as you can see, nothing happens. If I put it in the normal output, you will see all the harmonics are like, they shoot up. They're really, really high right now. And if I turn this down, now the DC is gone, you will see they drop down. And that's normal behavior. But with the PS Audio, nothing happened. No DC can actually influence the output of the power plant. Now, two volts of DC is really the maximum this unit can handle, because if I uh, go over that, it will just shut down, which is not really weird. But as you can see, right now it goes up. And if I put it in the PS Audio, Nothing. Completely gone. And this is really impressive because I have tested the Synchro from Isotech and yes, it lowers DC, but not like this. Not even close. Now, this is all synthetic tests. Uh, really interesting and all, but um, what happens if I actually connect an amplifier to it? Will it lower the distortion on the output? Well, let's see. Now we are measuring the output of the Bryston Powerpack 300 amplifier. I connected the output of the prism to the input of the Bryston, the output of the speaker to a dummy load, and I'm measuring the output of the speaker by tapping off that signal. Now, you can see it has to warm up a little bit, I think. Here you see the signal noise and distortion. Here you can see, I will zoom this in because it's way more interesting if I zoom this a little bit. No, that's not good. Uh, let's go to this. Okay. 
This is the noise floor of the Bryston. This is the one kilohertz tone I'm actually injecting. Two, three, four, five kilohertz. These are, these are some harmonics, really low. It has a pretty high damping, a uh, pretty high feedback loop. So 2.6 volts, 79.7 dB signal noise and distortion, which is pretty much what I'm always measuring on this amp. Now, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna calibrate this one, switch off these, set up auto-tune to make it a fair comparison, and then I'm gonna swap the amplifier from the wall to the PS Audio and see what happens. Well, what do we see? Well, the signal noise and distortion actually improved to 80. And I'm seeing a little bit less, let's make it red and green. Red is normal, green is what we're measuring now. Green, okay. And some noise has been removed. It's not a lot, but you can see in the uh, signal noise and distortion that the amp actually improved and some grass is lower. You can see here we're missing something and it's structurally a little bit lower, which is reflected in the signal noise and distortion. Now you can say, yeah, you can't hear that. There's more to it than just signal noise and distortion figures and numbers. We know that now, but saying that these generators don't do anything is just not true. They do improve uh, the performance of audio equipment. And you can see it here as well, if I just zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that overall the noise floor is just lower with this one. Are there better conditioners? Yes, I've measured power conditioners that do more in terms of lowering the noise floor, like the Yeti reference. Will it sound better? I don't know, because I haven't actually heard this unit yet. I don't know what it does to a power amp. Um, but it was funny to see that it's actually reflected in the CNOT. It's actually reflected in our synthetic test that this one is really, really, really stable uh, in terms of output. It doesn't matter what happens at the grid. It will just output the same performance regardless and uh, I can actually show you the difference because because it's it's funny uh, if you measure the normal grid and then go to this unit <laughs> uh, let's see what happens uh, because this is not the right one if I measure the normal grid now you will see it's not really clean at all It's 1.45-ish, which is not bad. I've seen worse. Uh, but if I put, I mean, this is a realistic output. And if I then put it in the PS Audio, now you see what it does to a normal grid. And it's 0.35-ish. And the sine audio wave, you can see actually some DC on here because it's flattened and now it's perfectly round. And if I zoom in, in the relevant part of the spectrum, like here, you can see the distortion is just way, way down. And that's impressive because this, this is what makes the, the blackness in the, in the uh, music you hear, I think. I mean, I've measured a lot of power conditioners and this is mostly what impacts the blackness in the, in the music. Of course, your equipment has to match, but yeah, you can see it on the Bryson as well. The noise floor just goes down. I mean, well, this is what I wanted to show you. Yes, there is a big difference in power conditioning. Yes, they do something. Yes, it's measurable, even on the speaker output. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.